we have a bunch of service calls again today. Uh, I don't know how many I'll be able to film. But we have a no cool this morning in uh, South Wilmington. We have a potential thermostat problem in, uh, near downtown Wilmington and another uh, call downtown Wilmington. Insufficient cooling. So uh, we'll see how much film we get. Hopefully we get some cool stuff. And uh, stick around. Here is our number one for today. It's an old York heat pump. I'm not sure what the problem is. The homeowner hasn't gotten home yet. And maybe that's him now. Yep, there he is. Well, it's not actually the York. It's the pane next to it. So the blower's not coming off, so we're going to take a look at that. Let's see what's going on there. And there's a little interesting relay right there. That is actually a direct current relay. Uh, and it has a AC input, and then it rectifies the signal from that input. And why they use these, I don't know. Alright, we're going to use the blade puller to take this off. And then take a look at the motor and see how it's different than the PSC motors. Or variable speed motors too. Well our shaft of our motor is in there pretty good. Even the blade puller is starting to burrow into the shaft. I don't want to do too much of that because uh, I've had a few of these just would not come off. This one's pretty young so it's kind of surprising but it's uh, pretty corroded on the outside of it, pretty rusted up. So I'm going uh, to make it swim in WD-40 for a few minutes and uh, we're going to see if we can't bust it off. Okay here's our X13 motor all separated here. What a pain in the ass. Uh, it wouldn't come out with the blade puller. It was so fused to that blower wheel, I had to drill it out to get it out, which is last resort hellacious. There you go. There's some blower shaft. Y'all can have that. What we have up here is the bottom is the uh, either 120 or 240 volts of power for the motor. And the top is speed selection, which is a low voltage wire that's run off a blower relay. And uh, whenever the uh, relay kicks on for a call for fan, it sends power to this and the, the, that determines their motor speed. Uh, five speed ECM X13 motor. Uh, I know there's some three speed ones on my Heil stuff. And it's pretty much the same because they're all made by a carrier now, I reckon. And then your power is up here. Uh, it enters AC, it's rectified, and it becomes a DC. Uh, <clears throat> that's why you don't have the capacitor. It's actually a, like a three-phase DC motor. And that's why you don't need a capacitor to start the motor because it already has a that uh, next phase necessary to get the uh, shaft rotating. So there it is. There's the pain in the butt for itself. Take this piece of crap back. The good thing it is under warranty because they cost a lot. And uh, we'll see if Care has one, and we'll install it whenever they get one. We are now headed to downtown Wilmington. Uh, this is Front Street. There's a few industrial things on this end, and then it goes right into the heart of downtown. Uh, a bar down there on Front Street says it's not cooling enough. And it may be just the fact that the bar has more customers this year than last year because they said they were doing better and they leave the doors open. So this could be one of those things where, you know, it might be nothing. But we're going to go down there and take a look and see what's what. There's a little bit of going into downtown Wilmington. It's kind of a nice place I thought I'd show everybody. You have the river, some cool places to eat, a few bars down here. Actually, a few is a little bit of an understatement. We've done a lot of jobs down here. There's a couple places we take care of right there. Uh, up here on the right on the corner, another place we take care of a little three-story building. We were there the other day changing a seven and a half ton reversing valve, which was a pain in the anus, but we did it. Market Street here is the center of downtown. Uh, and let's get down to business. We have a Courier Gemini split seven and a half ton air conditioner with electric heat. We're seeing if it has a problem or 
problem lies elsewhere with the building or the amount of people. But we're going to check her over. We just did preventive maintenance not too long ago. Adjusted a TXV. It was a little bit out of whack. Besides that, everything was square. So we'll see what's going on. So the superheat's very high, and the uh, pressure's high on the high side. We got not much refrigerant coming through the TXV on the low side. Uh, we are in the den of many condensers back here underneath an overpass, so it's a little bit warmer down here than it normally would be, so it kind of throws off the high temperature and high pressure. We're going to look at the charging chart and see what it says. We have... We're going up to around 220 right now, so 220 is the second mark there. And let's see what our temperature is. 87.2. We got 220. We're right on the mark here. It's a little bit below the mark. So it says reduced charge, and I know that ain't true. So, uh, we have some allied issues with the TXV probably. So we'll let it run for a while, see what it does. I reinstalled the service bulb for the TXV a little bit differently. Superheat dropped a little bit, we're going to need to readjust again because we're still uh, out of whack here. Uh, 44 pounds on the low side is going to be a very cold coil. We'll see what we can do. I still don't believe it's low in refrigerant or anything like that. I believe this comes with the TXV issues because our subcooling is relatively high and our superheat is relatively high still. So we're going to open up the TXV a little bit more with that bulb and a new uh, installation method with it wrapped in cork tape and isolated and see if we can get that superheat down and that pressure up a little bit. Our big carrier is only letting about 50 pounds through, but the superheat has dropped. It's only around to around 35 or 36 now, but it, it started out, I don't know, in the mid or upper 40s, I cannot recall. But uh, So we're coming down the way we're supposed to. Uh, the head pressure is still very high. It's between 220 and 240. And uh, just comparing it to this ream here from 1992, uh, I'm not comparing the head pressure, but comparing the temperature off the condenser. Up here it was 112, 113. On the ream it was 125. So I can only imagine what kind of head pressure this thing is running. It'd be interesting. Uh, obviously the switch hasn't gone in and uh, interrupted the system yet, but uh, it's got to be running a little hot. So it's very deceptive down here. That's our TXV we need to adjust. Turning to the left, allowing for a lower superheat, thus flooding the coil with the refrigerant to bring the superheat down. We're going to go a couple more turns. It's hard to do with one hand. Well, that's a general idea. I'm going to finish it with my other hand because it's easier. We'll crank it down a couple more turns and test it again. While we're waiting for the uh, TXV to run on that uh, system for a little while, let's just compare a little bit about our den of heat here. We have two refrigeration condensers. We have the seven and a half ton straight cool. We have the rain here, all pouring heat into this area. So let's see how hot stuff is. We're killing time here. The old field piece laser thermometer. Very cool. We got 127 degrees on that condenser fan motor. Top of that compressor is 127. Let's see, the top of that compressor is 165. Ooh, that's a lot hotter. And that motor is 138. This whole condenser looks a little bit older. Uh, so it might be just a case of the charge is a little low or something like that. The pressure stayed a little hot. It's getting old. Let's see about our pump over here, I think. 122 on the top of it. I really can't see in there very well. And our 7.5 tons, 124, 127. Inside of the unit's 109. Just look at this thing. It's 100 degrees on that thing. It's not running or anything. It's just 
hot down here. That's why our pressures are so high. It just throws everything out of whack. Uh, you might have enough clearance to the uh, cement here. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's supposed to be around 60 inches, which is probably enough clearance just with all the walls, the brick walls around here. You just trap it here. All the heat just gets trapped down in here. Because there's another 10 condenser down there probably. Some weather heat stuff you can see. And then farther down is a good thing. Might not be 10, might be like 7 or 8. But just a lot of heat down here. Nowhere to go. Well, we opened her up as far as she could go. It looks like that's just barely enough. Uh, we're going to settle down a little bit more probably. But I think what the TXV or what the evaporator said was that it wanted a TXV superheat of a maximum of about 15, which which makes sense. You don't want to get up running in superheats of 20 to 30 all the time. This one's going to settle down, but she's pretty close. Looks a lot better, cools a lot better, and I think they're going to be happy. I think the issue was that on startup, this TXV required adjustment. I mean, you have to adjust them to suit your superheat. It just probably was never adjusted. Uh, it still cooled, but didn't cool very well. And now that the businesses uh, have more clients coming in, they're more successful, it's really showing that the uh, system wasn't cooling to its potential. So now we're getting squared. Uh, head pressure's still high for you know reasons we discussed. But it looks like they're gonna be a lot happier. Uh, TXV is definitely working a lot better. And uh, for those of you who saw me adjusting with the wrench the first time, that is because my service tool was in the van. I did go get my service tool adjusted. It had the same uh, tool that you open up your acetylene bottles, things like that, uh, you can use to adjust these TXVs, and it's a lot easier than what I was doing on camera. So uh, if you have to do it, uh, definitely go with the service tool. Okay, well, we're uh, looking a lot better. I'm about to call it a day here and head on home, and I will see you guys for the next one.